The question that I probably get the most every single day, well, other than being asked for activation codes, is what sneaker do I buy? So that's gonna depend on many different factors. But in today's video, I'm going to be covering the key things that you should be looking for when looking for a new sneaker. I'll talk about base attributes and why they're important. I will also cover upgraded attributes, what sneaker levels you should be aiming for, and why to avoid leveling up your sneaker past a certain level. Then finally, we will touch on gem sockets and why you should probably be avoiding this gem socket on your sneaker. So let's go ahead and dive right into today's video. What's up, guys? My name is Jay and welcome to Bitcoin Daily. I started out just like you guys about two months ago in Step In and I had no idea what to look for when I was buying my first sneaker. So I definitely made a few mistakes when purchasing my first common sneaker, which I eventually had to sell off to buy a better sneaker. Back then I had no idea about base attributes, the importance of efficiency and resilience and gem sockets. I honestly didn't even know how to unlock gems. So through trial and error and spending a lot of time in the discord doing research and speaking with a lot of people that had more experience and research than I did, I was able to crack the code. The goal for this video today is to help you guys so that you avoid all of these mistakes that I made when I bought my first sneaker so that you get to profit a lot faster. Currently, I'm almost at my nine sneaker mark, sitting at seven sneakers with one mint that I'm going to be doing later on today and my final mint to get to nine in 48 hours from right now. Well, more like 48 hours after I do my mint. So as you can see, for the past two weeks or so, I've been doing about $300 per day at the current prices. Soon I'll be doubling up my daily earnings time. So all of these will pretty much double up at that point. My main sneaker is currently a maxed out level 28 uncommon with 167 efficiency and 30 resilience. My sockets, as you can see on the screen here, is luck, luck, resilience, and efficiency. Now it's probably not the most efficient way to use your funds to start out with an uncommon. So let's talk about the first shoe that you should probably start out with which is a common sneaker. If you guys are new to step in, I recommend that you first watch this beginner's guide where I explain basically everything that you need to know about this project and how to get started. This current video is a good second video to watch as it's a guide on buying your first sneaker. Then you'll probably wanna check out the fastest return on investment strategy and also the strategy guide to maximize your profit. This should help you choose which sneaker is best for you to start out with and it'll give you an idea of your return on investment time, how long it's gonna take basically to break even and start making some profit. From there, you probably wanna check out this video here, which is the upgrade calculator guide. Basically, I show you guys how to optimize your upgrade points so that you can maximize your sneakers potential. And of course, if you're watching this video and you still don't have an activation code, then I recommend that you watch this video right here. I break down all the ways to get an activation code. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is why base attributes are so important and why you should be paying attention to them while you search for your first sneaker. So base attributes are basically your starting point, right? These are points that you initially get for free that just comes already with your sneaker. So regardless of the level of the sneaker, the base attributes are always the same. So let's take a look at one sneaker, right? So let's look at this one right here. This one has 3.7 efficiency, 6.6 .6 luck, 3.3 .3 comfort, and 1.2 resilience. Now let's look at another sneaker, and this one's going to be a perfect one. You see that this one is upgraded, right? So at first glance, this one seems like the better option. It's the same price and it has upgrades already. If you click on base right here, you notice that the efficiency on this one is 1.9. But Jay, isn't it better if it's already upgraded for you? Not really. So you can see here that both of these sneakers are level fives, but one is upgraded with a base of 1.9. The other is not upgraded with a base of 3.7. So how's this one a level five, the same as the other one? but has no upgrade. So when you see a sneaker like this, all that means is that it has the same upgrades available for you, but the owner just didn't input them themselves. So that means that when you buy the sneaker, you have the option of where you want to add in the 
points onto your sneaker. It does not mean that this shoe doesn't have the upgrades available. This shoe, as soon as you buy it, will have 20 upgrade points available. So it looks like this person put all the upgrade points, 19 upgrade points on efficiency, which took them from 1.9 to 20.9 and they put one upgrade point on resilience which took them from 4.3 to 5.3 so they used all 20 points right and now their upgraded shoe is 20.9 efficiency with 5.3 resilience if we look at the same sneaker and we did the same exact upgrades that would mean putting 19 into efficiency which would put our efficiency on this exact shoe at 22.7 and one point on resilience which would put our resilience at 2.2 now you see that the efficiency on this one is higher with the same amount of upgrade points right the reason why is because the base stats in efficiency are higher on this shoe. This is why it's important. This is why I tell you guys to look for sneakers that have the best possible base stats in efficiency and resilience. Now the resilience on this one is pretty low. So again, we want to look for something with better efficiency and resilience base stats. Because as we upgrade the sneakers, if your shoe has better resilience and better efficiency, it's always going to have an advantage over a shoe with worse or less base stats. Because remember, every sneaker is going to get the same exact amount of points for upgrades. So if the sneakers are the same level and one has upgrades, the other one does that just means one owner put the upgrades in and the other one didn't, but they're available for you once you buy that sneaker. A trick that I actually like to do myself when I'm selling sneakers is if the sneaker has bad efficiency and bad resilience, I use my points to upgrade it because I want to hide those numbers. I don't want you to see it. You see that this sneaker's base attributes are only, it's only a 1.5. You want to avoid any sneakers that have efficiencies this low. So when looking Looking for a sneaker, our main focus is to find a high efficiency sneaker with a decent resilience attribute as well. And we're talking about base stats, not upgraded stats. Ideally, we want the efficiency and resilience to be as close to 10 as possible. So the higher and closer to 10, the better the sneaker is. Luck and comfort, we're not really too worried about. It's not something that we're focused on. So we're not even going to look at that for this video. So let's take a look at this sneaker. This is actually a sneaker that I minted myself that has really good efficiency base stats. You can see that the base stats for this one is 9.1 efficiency. It's rare to see another shoe with base stats higher than this now as far as the resilience it's a little bit low it's at 3.0 but i think the efficiency makes up for it because it's so high already so this would be a good sneaker to start with it would be a good sneaker as your main shoe so let's look at the scenario on step and guide where that shoe was upgraded to 20.9 efficiency right so it was a level 5 jogger 20.9 efficiency luck and comfort doesn't matter and its resilience was we had one upgrade, so it was at 5.3. So this sneaker here is making about 8.46 GST per day, minus its repair cost, 2.88. Daily income sits around 5.58 per day. Now, if you look at my sneaker that starts off with a 9.1 base stat on efficiency, and you upgrade the same sneaker to level five, add the same exact amount of points, this sneaker is now making 9.45 GST per day, minus the repair cost, 2.52. That's 6. 0.93. That's over one entire GST per day that you're making extra. You're making about 1.2 more per day to be exact because of its base stats, right? Do that over a 30 day period. That's 36 more GST that you're making per month because of better base stats. At GST's current price, that's $218 per month extra that you're making because you got a shoe with better base stats versus a shoe with bad base stats and if you continue on and on and on you'll see that it'll have a difference of about two three thousand dollars within a year's time just because of that little difference so I've covered this in other videos, but when it comes to the type of sneaker that you're looking to get, it is really up to you. What I personally do for myself, I only use joggers. I only buy joggers. I only mint joggers. Everything I do has to do around joggers. The reason why is because joggers make more than walkers, so they're automatically better. If you want to walk, you can still walk with a jogger. If you want to jog, 
you have a jogger. Now, if you wanna run, that's going to depend on your ability to be able to run every single day. Remember, this is not just about one day. It's not about just five days. It's not about a week or two. We're talking about every single day. That will take a tax on your body. Now, there's something that you do all the time already. If you're a marathon runner, if you're a world-class athlete, whatever it may be, then go for it. But if you have any doubts in your mind, maybe you'd like to run sometimes. I'm telling you guys, stick with a jogger. And if you wanna get a trainer, that's fine, but expect a trainer to run you probably around four to five more sole or four to five more hundred dollars than a jogger at the same level. A trainer, you can either walk, jog, or run. So it is pretty cool. It's just gonna cost more and your days to break even are going to be a little bit longer because of the extra cost. But I know plenty of people that go for trainers and they love it. So if you're one of those, then by all means, go for it. If you're not one of those and you're in doubt whether or not you can run 365 days a year, then I strongly suggest to get a jogger. If you only like to take walks, I still recommend a jogger if you can walk at a fast pace. If not, just get a walker or you can also get a trainer. The next thing that's going to make a difference when you're buying your first sneaker is what level that sneaker is at. So depending on the level of the sneaker, several things are going to change. One is obviously the amount of upgrade points that the sneaker already has available. Two is how much time you're going to have to be taking in order to upgrade it to more levels, to higher levels, depending where you're trying to get to. And three, it's also going to affect how long it's going to take you to break even and get into profit profit with your sneaker. So currently these are the cost of upgrading your sneakers. So as you can see, it is a bit pricey to level up. If we pull up my chart on days to break even and getting an ROI on your investment, you can see that level nine sneakers is the fastest one where you can reach break even and finally hit profit. If you're just taking profit every single day, it would take about 23, 24 days. Obviously this is going to vary depending on the price of GST. Right now, GST is up and Solana is down, making the days to hit a return on investment less than before. So this would all fluctuate as prices change. So you'll need to figure out what that day to ROI is depending on prices at the time that you're watching this recording. Now, if you're looking to go the cheapest route possible, then that's probably going to be levels five sneakers. The reason why is because people who mint and flip are usually using those sneakers to mint. They only level them up to level five, put two or three mints on them, and then put them on the market to sell because it's no longer useful for them. So depending when you watch this video, where the prices are, it would run you anywhere around $1,000, 1100 to $1,200. If floor prices go up again, this could be a lot more. So it's just going to depend when you watch this video. A level zero through four is going to cost you more than just getting the level nine, and you're still going to have to upgrade it yourself so it's gonna take you more time. Unless you're planning on getting multiple shoes to mint right away, I don't recommend buying anything in level zero to four. Unless you're really strapped on cash, I don't recommend level five. I recommend at least going up to level nine, which would run you around $1,300 at current prices. If you're cashing out every day, you'll hit break even within a month and then you can go from there. Also, if you're trying to get to three sneakers, this is also a good route to go because within a month, you'll earn enough to buy your second sneaker and then eventually you'll be able to mint to get a third sneaker. Now for a second sneaker, I would suggest getting something between level zero to level four with one mint or less. For your main sneakers, I would say that getting a sneaker with two mints is fine. You can still do one more mint on it once you get another shoe that has one or zero mints on it to get that third sneaker and that'll put you on the next level where you get double your time overall. Now, if you do have a bit more capital to risk on this project and to put into it, then the next best choice I would say is level 19. So of course, this is all depending on your situation. Some people might have this up from capital, some don't. If you don't, level nine is your play. If you wanna hit break even as soon as possible, level nine is the play. If you have a bit more upfront capital, then level 19 might be the better play for you. Now, this is going to cost you probably $1,000 more 
than whatever the level nine sneaker is going to cost you. And you kind of want to get the same thing around a shoe with two mints. This is going to be making you about four more GST per day than a level nine sneaker. And you can still hit break even pretty quickly probably within a month or so. This one, it'll take a little bit longer, but you can still hit break even pretty quickly. This also works for getting your second shoe. You'll hit it within 30 days or so, buy a shoe with one or zero mints, and then you'll be able to mint your third shoe. All right, so the final thing we're going to talk about is gem sockets. These definitely play a role as well, so you cannot ignore these. However, before I show you what gem sockets to avoid, make sure to smash that subscribe button. If you guys wanna maximize your profits in Step In and other projects similar to Step In, then smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. In addition to that, I cover topics about crypto trading, passive income opportunities, and all the latest money-making trends in crypto. I upload a video almost every single day about these topics, so please smash that subscribe button so that you never miss another opportunity to make money in crypto again. In addition to that, I answer every single DM that I get on Instagram or Twitter, and I answer as many comments as possible right here on the YouTube channel. So if you have any questions about anything that we speak about today, drop it in the comments. So finally, let's talk about gem sockets that you should probably be avoiding on your sneakers. By avoiding these gem sockets, not only will it help make your sneaker better down the road, but if you decide to sell your sneaker at some point in time, you can usually sell it at a premium. So if we look at my current sneaker right now, this is my main shoe, you will notice one thing. I have luck, resilience, and efficiency. If we look at another one of my shoes, luck, resilience, efficiency let's look at another one luck resilience efficiency are you guys seeing the common theme luck resilience efficiency the way that the game is set up right now there is zero absolutely zero use for comfort gem sockets especially if you have a common sneaker when buying a common sneaker do not get a sneaker with a comfort gem socket because even if, let's say if in the future, comfort becomes relevant, common sneakers are not going to be good earners of GMT, which is what comfort is used for. I mean, things could change. If things were to change, I'll make a video update about it. But the way that the game is right now, comfort is not relevant. At this point right now, you still can't even earn GMT, even if you hit level 29, level 30. And let's say that you can earn GMT. Would you rather earn GMT at 318 or GST at $6? Basically double the reward. So as of this moment, as of today, GMT and comfort, they're, they're not relevant to the game. I avoid comfort so much that if I mint a shoe with a gem socket that has comfort in it, I will go out of my way to sell it and get rid of it and just buy a shoe maybe with one mint or something like that that doesn't have comfort in it. That is one of the main things that I look for when buying sneakers. I do not want comfort gem sockets in my sneakers on none of my sneakers. If you're looking to be minting down the road, you don't wanna be minting sneakers with comfort gem sockets in it. So, and if one of the parent sneakers has the comfort gem socket, then there's a possibility that you're going to mint one with the comfort gem socket. That's why as soon as I get any sneaker with a comfort gem socket, I get rid of it instantly. So basically as I go through the market, I look and if I see the red gem socket, I just go on to the next one. I don't even look at it. See, this one has no red. So now I'll look at the base stats. I can see that they're trash. I continue to the next one. This one has two red slots. I am out of here. This one has a red slot. I am out. No red slots. All right, let's look at base. Three efficiency, not enough. Let's keep going. So I think you see where I'm going with this. Luck, efficiency, and resilience are the only gem sockets that you want in your sneakers. Now, with all that being said, if you want to know more about projects just like this, as soon as I get into them, then you need to get into my mentorship program. You can see that in my mentorship program, I posted about step in over one month ago. At the time when sneaker was about 9.6 Solana or $870. I recently posted a new play to earn project that I just invested in and I'm gathering data together so that I can then create some videos for you guys, of course. In my mentorship program, I post all the projects that I invest in as soon as I vet them. In addition to that, I share every single trade that I take every single day with my complete trading plan 
entry, stop loss, take profit, all of it. Now, there are a limited number of spots for this. So if you're interested, make sure to go down to the description and hit the link below. I'm telling you guys, crypto is a once in a generation opportunity and the way it is set up right now, the easy opportunities to make money will not last forever. I went from a high school dropout to a failed musician to a regular nine to five worker until I was able to retire back in 2017. Now I do crypto full time and then I'm literally a professional walker. So if you guys are interested, sign up in the description below. If you're new to Steppin, I strongly recommend that you check out these next two videos, the Steppin Beginner's Guide and the Steppin Strategy Guide so you can start moving to earn and maximize your profits. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, peace and love.